All right, last lecture, we uh, started to introduce recursion. So I'm, um, and I think I'm at this uh, end of this section, uh, 18.4. So let's look at 18.4. <clears throat> We uh, introduced this example to write a recursive method for finding uh, whether a string is a palindrome. So remember this one we uh, studied at the end of the last class. Mm -hmm. All right, so this program here, so let's take another look here. It's this is the uh, uh, recursive method. So here is is palindrome. So, and you write recursive method uh, first, and you're gonna set up this method header. So here it's the name of the method and text a string argument and returns a boolean value from true or false. Now, this is recursive method. You have the best cases. So the best, there's two best cases here is the string size. If it's less than or equal to one, so that is a true. And else, if the uh, uh, first character is not the same as the last character, we're gonna return false. So those two are the best cases. And then we need to have a reduction to reduce it to a smaller cases. So here, if the uh, first character and last characters are the same, and now we're gonna reduce the problem to, to test whether the substring removing the first one, the last one is a palindrome. So this is the one, it's a recursion right here. And now we uh, we had this problem in the previous uh, chapter, so this we solve it by writing and using a loop. So now we use uh, recursion. You can think about this using recursion is like implicit loop. You don't explicitly write the code for the loop, but in the recursion, and this is internally it, it is processed as a loop. All right, so this code has one problem is here, right here. So now you see here, we're writing efficient program in this class, a data structures class. We, um, and we write the program. Uh, it does not only just the work right, but it's also a work efficiently. So this is not efficient. So why it's not efficient? Because every time you uh, invoke this, is palindrome and with a new string. So you hear it's a substring is returns a new string. So you're creating many, many objects in the process. It's not efficient. We can improve it. And this is, goes to the next section. <clears throat> so next section, and the way we're gonna improve it is this. We, are going to now rewrite the code. And so the way we're gonna write the code is this. We're gonna write the code this way here. Is palindrome, we're gonna return here is palindrome and with an overloaded method. It's gonna call a helper method. So what are we doing is, is palindrome, we got this is the same string S, but we're gonna specify the low and high. So here is low and high. All right, we're gonna to work on this a little bit more now. So what I'm gonna do is to add this right here, public static boolean <clears throat> is adding wrong. And so here is string s and this is int and low and int high 
All right, so what I'm going to have here is this. Uh, the low is from zero. And the high is going to be the last character. So low is the first character. And this is the high is the last character. The last character is S star length minus one. All right. So here, we're going to look at this. Uh, This is the this string. It's a, it's a, it's a very large string, but we're looking at only part of it, from low to high. So this string is. So it's it's we're looking at the string. Test if the partial string. So something like this, as low to and all the way to high. So this is the substring is palindrome. All right, so here's the best case. And if uh, high is less than or equal to low, all right, so then this is either empty or just have one character. In that case, it's true. And so else we can look at S dot at low. It's not equal to this. So how do you change this one to high? All right, so this is return false. And now I'm gonna return, uh, let me do this now to uh, uh, unmute everybody so we're gonna do uh all right okay so um uh, all right just um so you have questions and so please ask me all right uh, can you hear me well are yeah are we supposed to be muted or unmuted or unmuted uh so you uh i think when you speak unmute it okay so, Okay. And that's, I think that's the way I let you take care of this function. All right. So, what is the question? Just, is the question. Yeah. Uh, do you have a question, Luke? Yeah. Sorry. I was just wondering what, what the question is that you were, uh, oh. you were asking us. I was asking, okay. I was asking, I already um, uh, answered this. Here is, uh, is the one here, right here. You're going to write this compare and the, two ends of this substring at index low and at index high. So here is high. All right, so now, all right, how do you write this part? So you're gonna have this is going to be, you're gonna recursively call this is palindrome here. So now I'm not creating a new string. See here, if you use the substring method, you're gonna create a new string. So now I'm using the same string here, S, but it is now a smaller part. So how do you write this two parts? Low minus one? Right. It's low plus one. Or plus one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and this one is? I minus, I minus one. one. I minus one, yeah. Okay. So you Wait, do so that. What's the point of yeah. adding the second method in? So the point of the second method is now you make this code more efficient. You're not creating new objects anymore. So I'm gonna this I'm gonna to copy here just to leave myself a copy, and I'm showing sure the answer. This is the original one. Original one it's coming from here. What you see is every time you invoke is palindrome, you are creating a new object. New object, yep. new object. Okay, so now with this, the improvement here, and we achieved the same result, but this is more efficient. You're not creating a new object. You still use the original string S. Okay, so this is a very common method in writing a, a recursive method and is to introduce 
a helper method. Okay. Uh, so if you just use the original one, and that's how you're going to work, you, you end up with creating more objects. But now I'm going to work with this one here. So this is the uh, uh, alternative is pen and drawing. And this is here, I have the strength and I'm, I'm specifying the portion of the string using low and high. Yeah, that makes so sense. Easy. Yeah, All so, right. so um, sorry. Um, I was wondering, like, essentially, we just each uh, invocation of the is palindrome overload we just made, uh, we're basically, uh, we're, we're manipulating the index that it's looking at, like the char at, rather than creating a new object yeah. each time. Okay. That's exactly. So there's more examples in the uh, next section. So this is actually, uh, I already started the next section. So you can look at the next section here. It's this is called the recursive uh, helper method. So here, it's the recursive helper method. All right, yeah. Okay, so this is already, and there's more examples here and using recursive helper method to uh, write more efficient for code. <clears throat> Um, the, uh, I want to go to the quizzes here. So look, the quizzes right here. <clears throat> so please do all the quizzes. Uh, let's do one uh, together now. <clears throat> all right, so here's the description. Write the definition of a method named copy that receives a reference to a scanner object associated with a stream of input. All right, so let's put the definition of ecstatic. Okay. <clears throat> um, I think it doesn't return anything. So the method, let's, let's you can continue to read that. The method re reads all the strings remaining to be read from the stream and displace them one on a line with no other spacing onto standard output. Uh, the, uh, so the method does not return anything, just print something. So static, public static, void. And the name of the method is copy. And the parameter the, uh, here is the argument we're gonna have is receive a reference to a scanner object. So scanner. All right, so this is uh, the method header. So we're gonna set up this header now. And the name, and here is the, uh, so the parameter input, it's a scanner. All right, so what does the method do? Uh, method reads all the strings remaining to be read from the string and displays them onto a line with no other strings. Okay. Onto standard output. <clears throat> so we're going to use recursion for this. Um, <clears throat> so what, what we do now is this. We're going to see if there's anything to read. So if there's nothing to read, it's int, and then we're done, right? So if how do you know if there's anything to read? If input has next. So here is input that has next. If it has next one, and we're going to read it and then print it out. All right, I'm going to can simply write it this way. Either way is system.out.print. You need to print everything at one on a line. So using print line input dot next. So uh, you know how this input works is there's a cursor that starts from the beginning. When you read one, it automatically moves to the next one. It automatically moves to the next one when you read one, read one, read one, read one. All right, so at the end is this. Okay, all right. Now, if you write this code, it's not gonna work. Why it's not gonna work? What's missing? There's no return value. Yeah, 
uh, not the return value. There's no recursion here. Right. There's no recursion. Okay. So this is going to be just stuck there. There's no no recursion now. I mean, you, how do you get the recursion here? Is this. You're going to invoke this method. So look, hey, why they're the same? You're reporting copy input, copy input. Well, look, when you do this one, this input dot next, the cursor automatically moves to the next, right? So the next time your input stream will become smaller, right? Yep, it's the same scanner. Yeah, this is the scanner. Okay. It's become small. Okay. All right. So let's make some mistakes here. Uh, first mistake I'm going to make is this. I'm not sure if this is going to give me an error or not. I think it should. Uh, let's do. Uh, all right. I'm just, just doing this. See what happens. Okay. And see if this will be. Uh, one of you, there's nothing to read. Uh, say it again. One of you, there's nothing to read. Oh, nothing to read. It's int. So here, this is the uh, at the end. So you read everything. There's nothing to read. So what happens? You don't do anything. So here is like there's one else and and do nothing. Because it's do nothing, you don't need any, anything to do. Okay, so this is it. All right, we have a logic error. Uh, it's very annoying. So here, this is an incorrect hint. Solution with your approach, don't usually uh, use static. No, this is uh, always, um, this is so strange because we, uh, we should use static. Uh, but this is annoying here. Uh, all right, and you can see other hints. Uh, um, so, but it, sometimes it's just not really, really good. Uh, uh, but anyway, you can see that something with this, uh, there's, there's some errors here. All right, I'll let you look at everything here, but I know, and this is the uh, issue here. It's, it's, it's a simple matter here. It's one, you have to, one, I love. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, oh, let's do another, next, another one here. Oh, I'm sorry. I should go back to, to, to resubmit it. I'm going to resubmit it. All right. This is correct. Okay, and you got uh, uh, all three points. So let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> so this is the next one. <laughs> Write the definition of a method named at that receives a reference to a scanner object associated with a stream of input consisting of integers only. The method reads all the integers remaining to be read uh, from the string and returns their sum. All right, so here uh, you have look at this method here. Uh, so input, uh, the method reads these uh, uh, remaining, um, so return their sum. So this is have to return something. So I'm going to write this public static. Now this is not a void anymore. So this is going to return something, return int at, and this is scanner input. Yeah. All right, so here is this. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do this if input dot has Next. Okay. So we're going to return 
input dot. Okay, I already have a mistake in my coding here, but we're gonna fix it. So uh, return input dot. Uh, next, it's going to be get int plus now because recursive at input. Okay, yeah, you can write this code. So just continue to get the next one added to the return. All right. Um, there's a mistake here in this code is right here. It has next is method. So this is the, the error right here. I need to fix this. Okay, uh, let's give it a try. We may have other errors. So let's give it a try now. All right, we got a compile error. Here it says, uh, at input. Okay, missing return statement. Something here with my uh, public return. Oh, all right. So I think I know now what happens is this. Uh, <clears throat> there's, um, there's one thing here is what happens if it's an empty string? If the string is empty, what, what should it return? It should return. Uh... I would assume zero for this case. Yeah, that's right. So that's what I'm missing here. Return zero. You have to return something. <laughs> yeah, you have to return right. something. So this is this is the uh, this is because that's the reason here. Let's try it again now. All right, everything works fine. Okay. All right, um, so the, uh, <clears throat> all this uh, assignment in chapter 18 is due, um, I think it's Friday next week. So all the work in Revel is like part of our actual grade, right? It's not just practice work. No, it's not practice work, it's your grade, yes. I, um, you know, um, we have probably uh, a quarter of students have not even created Revel account. So they're not reading anything yet. Okay. So you, uh, this is something if you, uh, you have to do it. So this is the, uh, it's, it's your, it's, it's you and you have to study and for it. Okay. And you have to manage your time, um, yeah. To and don't do it the last day. Um, so do it, and so incrementally and study, study, and to get it done before it's due. Uh, there's no way you do it to the last minute. Okay. And then you're not learning anything the last minute. It's, it's not going to work. Okay. Uh, you're you're not. So you already have 1301, 1302, and so one year of study in this program, and you know a lot of things already about this uh, nature of this course. It's you you have to put your effort into this, okay? And you you're gonna to see the fruits out of this work. All right, so let's move on. <clears throat> Good. <clears throat> Sorry, um, the yes. add input is that it would that be the first value in the in the April string. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you say it again? I said the add input on the line three is that it would that be the initial value of the input string. Uh, this this one line three, uh, yeah. um, here here look this input dot next int, 
So you, you read the next input integer, all right? And then, so your codes are moved to the next, right? So what you do, you do it recursively call add input. So that takes up the rest of the numbers recursively. So here, add input. Okay. So here's the input stream. You see my, my gesture here, the hand? Do you see the input stream here? So this is the beginning, okay? The beginning, you have the numbers, you read one, move it automatically, 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 move all the way to the end. So let's read one, you get that one, okay? That one plus all things remaining using this add input. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I really give you some time. Um, uh, so please and, and get your camera on. So if you don't have a camera and try to find a way to get a camera, okay? Yeah. So you, you you just you need it not only for my class you need it for other classes for other purpose yeah all right uh, so uh, work on this and you can use any reference uh, so you you need to so this is what I uh, suggest other students to do you just work that on your own and think about it and if, if you're stuck somewhere and get help, you can get help, any source, and also come to me. So this is all fine. You just email me, okay? All right. So the good thing about uh, our subject, and I think also maybe true for other subjects, is there's abundant uh, help online. And you need to just utilize that. I do that too much for myself too. All right, so let's go on now. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna go. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna uh, study this uh, next section is uh, an interesting problem we're gonna solve problems using recursion. <clears throat> All right, think about this problem. Finding the directory size. Okay, so you are from using all this uh, operating systems using Mac or Windows. Um, so you can, you know, have a photo, you want to see the size, you get the, uh, the uh, directory size. So there's a program doing this, calculating the size. We're gonna write this program. So we write the program to find the directory size. All right, so here's the directory. All right, think about this directory is here. It's a directory. So we need to find the directory size. The directory consists of all the files. All right, plus subdirectories. And subdirectories will contain files and sub subdirectories. Now, this is going to be recursive structure. So, do you see the structure is recursive structure? How do we do this? Oh, we're going to find the directory size for this D size for this D. So, it's the size of the files F1, F2, plus Fn. And then here, plus size D1 the directory size, size D2, and size D3, and D N, last one. All right, so now what is the uh, uh, best case? The best case is it's a file. We can find the size already, the file size. Now, if it's a directory, we need to continue to do a recursive call on the directory. All right, so how do you find a file size if the file? 
there's a method here in the file. In the file class, um, this is in chapter 12 in the book. So we have the file class. You can get a file size by invoking its length method. How do you find all the items under the directory? You can use this list files to find all the directories. So please note that the file class in the Java API here, it's not just for the files, it's also for directories. So that's kind of you know mis confusing, misleading. And everything is a file. Yeah, yeah, but it's treated <laughs> as a file. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So now, and with all things we have from chapter 12, and we know this is a very useful class. You can get a lot of properties from uh, your operating system and through this file. So we're going to write the code here. We we'll write the code using recursion. It's this. All right, so we, we have this main as prompt the user to enter a directory. And now we're going to use this get size. And this is a new file and directory and get how many bytes. So please uh, just look at a sample run here. This is a sample run. So enter a directory or a file. So here is a directory. And this is the how many bytes are here. We'll get this. All right, so now we're going to write the code here and get, all right, what is this? Yeah, uh, so get size, this is the file. And so we're gonna return the size and return the size, how many bytes are there. So size is zero now. We're gonna add all this together. So here, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna add all this together. So how do we get all of this? It's to use this. <clears throat> so we look at this file here. If this is directory, file dot is directory. So we're going to do get everything, all the items on the directory. Otherwise, this is a file. So we're going to do the size here. It's this is. So here is the file. So how do you get the, uh, get the uh, number of bytes in the file? Remember this method? Length. Length. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so we get this. All right, so here, if it's directory, this list of files will get you all the items from this under this directory and their files. So they're considered as files, even their subdirectories. And then we're going to add all together. So that's how we do it. Uh, so this will be get size. And this is going to be uh, files and brackets i. So please just look at this here, what I have here. It's everything here like this add together. And that's the one. That's what we're doing here, this for group. Okay. So and now recursion is right here. This is recursion. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I see, you know, in the um, in the non-base case, um, we we use a for loop. Is there any way we could rewrite this recursive, you know, method to solve the problem without using any loop at all? That's the challenge for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yes. Uh, there's really uh, a lot of creative ways to write the code. Um, so what you can see this is. Uh, it's it's a pretty straightforward way. Just I'm gonna have another challenge for you if you want to try. Don't write using any recursion to rewrite the code. Okay. Okay. Yes, you you can do that. I know, but you can think about it. It's going to be a lot of work, and so that's not uh, um. Not practical and not efficient. So this is really efficient way to do it. Okay. So here, recursion is really good. What is good for recursion is to use a prior recursion for the problem that's inherent to recursive, like this. We're gonna more problems, and we're gonna take you to the next next uh, section. 
So I'll give you another example. This is a classic example. It's called a Tai of a Honoi problem. So this example here, I don't know, you, you probably know it already. It's very, very interesting one. It's a, it's a classic uh, mathematical problem. It's a Tai of Honoi problem. So you have all the disks on one tile. Uh, one, you can call this a towel, okay? Towel A, you're gonna move all these disks from towel A to towel B, but you can only move one disk at a time. And anytime you um, you always put the, uh, uh, the, the smaller one on top of the large one, you cannot put the large one on top of the smaller one. So what you need a help, uh, from another tower, so this tower C as a help. So let's go down. You can see that see this is easy way here. If there's only one, so it's very easy. So that's all. You, you get it right away. Okay. All right. So now, if there's there's two, it's not difficult. So this is two here, and so this is. So what you can do, you move this and here to see, and then you can do and see what happens. So this is how you're going to do it. All right, so there, this. All right, and three is still manageable. And with four and five and six, you can see more complex. This is, this is uh, how you're going to write the code for this. Uh, so what we're going to do is using recursion is this. So look at this, tau A, we have N disks. So we're going to do it recursively, move N minus one disks to C and with the help of B. And now we can move this disk from A to B, the last one. And then we do it recursively, move N minus one disks from C to B with the help of A. Very simple. So you need to write the code to describe this using programming language. So using programming language here, we have to write this using recursion, write a method here. Move disks. So this is how many disks and disks. You have three towers. A, B, C here is from tower, two tower, and aux tower. And the rules of this ABC changes in the process when you do this recursion. But here, you just specify the first point here is front tower, and this two tower, and this aux tower. Now, describe it using program language. If you just have one disk, and that's the best case, it's just move that disk from front tower to two tower, you're done. Else, so like what we see that in diagram, you're going to move n minus one disks from front tower to aux tower with the that b as the, the uh, or two tower as the uh, aux tower to help. So now you can move n disk n from tower from the front tower to the two tower, and then you finally and recursively move n minus one disks from the aux tower to the tower two tower. So this is the code. So if you look at the code, it's, this is the implementation, how we're gonna implement this. So this is just getting the input of the number of disks. And now we're gonna, we're gonna print uh, the moves. And now you're gonna invoke this N. So here's the, the, the front tower is A and the uh, two towers B and the aux tower is C. So this is right here. And now move disk N from tower to tower, aux tower. So here, if n is one, and that's the best guess. So what you do is move that disk from the front tower to two tower. So now recursion, this is going to be n minus one. Okay, towers, uh, the disks. All right, so this is the uh, writing the code using recursion. Okay, it's it's a a classic problem, a recursive problem. It's a, a very uh, computation intensive problem, and we can write uh, a solution and using a recursion.
All right. Um, I think I'm going to uh, uh, stop here and let you uh, uh, digest the material. And if you have any questions, please ask. So again, and please don't uh, send me any chat, okay? Uh, can you just say it directly to me? I'm gonna see, ask, uh, answer. I'm checking the chat to see if I have any questions from students. Is it possible that we can send you messages directly in Rebel, or do we have to email you if you have a question? Uh, email me. Just email me, please. Yeah. Uh, you can send the Rebel to you. That goes to me. Yeah, that, that's 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 fine. Yes, you can do that. Okay. Do you, do you prefer uh, Gmail or Folio? Uh, it doesn't matter. It all goes to one plus. plus. Okay. Just like what I ask you to do is all go to one plus, then you get it right away. You don't have to check multiple places. Um, I was wondering, uh, the you know, we have that recursive method to calculate like the file, the size of an entire directory and all its contents recursively. You mentioned that it would be very difficult or, you know, somewhat difficult to write it, you know, with an iterative method with, you know, using a loop. What would yeah. the strategy be? Like, is that is there even an implementation for that that exists? I mean, you probably would want to use it, but. <laughs> the. Uh... Strategy for. For what? Uh, for not using recursion for that same problem, just using like an iterative oh, oh, oh. method with a loop. So not, not using recursion. Okay. All right. We're going to talk about actually uh, uh, the next uh, lecture. So let me just give you a heads up here. What you're going to see this kind of problem, it's inherent to recursive. So it gives you a natural solution using recursion. So this kind of problems, when you see a bunch of them uh, in this uh, you know, exercise also here, in this, uh, in the book, in the examples, you're gonna see the, uh, the pattern of this kind of problems. Like this directory size, it's inherently recursive, okay? Now for this problem, uh, if you write it and without it using recursion, you have to simulate a stack. Okay, so like like a collection or something? Yes, you have to do things oh. like what you do in the operating system. You have to simulate a stack and to store and all this things, okay, and on the stack. Okay. That's, you can always do it because you can write it this way, yeah. Okay, that, that's, that's good to know, inherently recursive. Thank you. All right. All right, so uh, please, um, and and complete your uh, programming assignments and multiple choice questions. So this is the uh, every section. And then at the end of chapter, and uh, there are programming projects. Okay. All right, uh, so uh, feel free to leave and I'm still here. And if you have questions, stay with me. Have a good one. Yes. Yes. Oh, thanks. Bye. Hello, Nathan. Any questions? Alisa? Drew? I was just waiting for anybody else. He, okay. All right, if you don't have any questions, uh, goodbye. Have a good weekend.